From Shih Tzus to Staffies, Great Danes to Greyhounds, dogs are Australia's number one pet. But every day, around 2,000 of our canine friends of all shapes, sizes, breeds and backgrounds await adoption. Once again, Pedigree and Pet Rescue join forces to champion the annual Pedigree Adoption Drive. This program follows four of those dogs in their search for loving homes and a new start in life. We're going um, into the pound for the council that covers Bacchus Marsh. And it's a small pound. We don't really know a whole lot about them except that they have a, a really good save rate, which is always nice when they can save more dogs than they put down. So we're going to go have a look at the dogs that they have available and see if there are any that we can take to put into our foster program to find permanent homes for. Well, a rescue dog in a pound or shelter situation is normally terrified. You know, they're in a cage, there's barking, there's noise constantly. They don't know why they're there or what's happening to them. Um, but a lot of them do, I think, have a very good idea that they're in big trouble <laughs> and that if they don't get adopted um, or rescued, you know, the um, result is, is normally euthanasia. There are over 100,000 dogs put down in Australia each year. The majority are dogs just like Millie here, which, if given the opportunity, would make a perfect family pet. The follows much-loved dog Russ recently passed away at the ripe old age of 13 and they've just decided to start looking for a new canine friend which they can welcome into the family. Prior to children we got a dog and you know when we decided on what breed it was going to be we did our homework and we you know, fell in love with pugs. I like that they've got wide eyes. <laughs> I think they snore louder than humans. <laughs> They get revenge too, which yeah. is funny. So if you've been away or you've given them a bath, they'll find something that they know that you really like and do a wee on it. <laughs> Ross was a fantastic dog. He was great. We had him from when he was a puppy. And he put up with the addition of two babies and was fantastic with kids. He was just a beautiful dog to have in the family. The process that we'd go through is walk in, see what they've got, and then assess, well, which dogs are they easily going to adopt out from the shelter and which ones can we do a better job finding a new home for? Yeah, I was just like a little staffy Roddy Max. Yeah, she's a sweet little thing named Millie, and uh, she's been wonderful in here so far. Uh, this little guy will be taken in a yes. heartbeat. Quite a lot of interest in here. Probably want to take a look at this one, just yes. bigger dog, young. How old is this dog? It's about six months? Yes, eight months? Okay. Well, one of our biggest problems is the misconceptions around rescue pets. Um, people believe that there's something wrong with them and that's why they've ended up in rescue, but it's really not the case. I mean, pets end up in rescue for so many different reasons. It can be financial hardship, divorce, people not really understanding what it takes to own a pet, so often for reasons no fault of their own. Royal Fairs are two pugs. They're about to turn four, their brother and sister. The old owner said that she was called Fez because she was a bit feral. Oh, good. The lady that surrendered them was unable to care for them anymore. She did really love them. She looked after them, took them for walks on the beach every morning, and she was very sad to surrender them. It wasn't their fault they were surrendered. It was circumstances in the old owner's life had changed, but she knew that our organisation would do right by them and be very picky on the home that they went to. Boy. It doesn't really care about the sounds. Once I find a dog that I think might be a good candidate, I want to see how accepting it is of humans, if it's got any interest, if it has any fears or sensitivities, and then determine if this is going to be a problem or if it's just an easy enough thing to remedy by relocating it into a home, getting it into a more normal environment. Uh, he's really calm. He's a little bit shy, um, which isn't unusual for a young dog, but certainly this environment will show a dog at its worst. And if this is the dog at its worst, then he's going to be great. So Gilbert takes the first step in his journey to a new life. Although saved from death row, there's still a lot of work to be done before he finds a permanent home. And the clock's ticking, because the sooner Gilbert finds a home, the sooner one of the other dogs left behind, like Millie, can be rescued. Gilbert, a young abandoned staghound pup, has recently been rescued from an uncertain future at a rural pound. 
whilst brother and sister pugs, Roy and Fez, surrendered by their owner, have begun their journey to find a new home. Well, David's um, brought Gilbert here to see if he will fit in as a foster dog. Normally I would introduce them all down at the park on neutral ground, but my dogs are just so used to all the comings and goings of different dogs, I know that they'll just be happy to welcome another one. So we'll just let him have a sniff around, and then when he's a bit more orientated, we'll take him inside. A foster care is someone who normally already has pets who just make room in their home for one more. They just slot into your family and you treat them as one of your own for a couple of weeks to a few months normally and just help sort of rehab them, I suppose, from their possibly traumatic experience at the shelter and help relax them into family life again. After a week in the pound, Gilbert could do with a bit of TLC. Before a rescue dog gets rehomed, they're vet checked, microchipped, vaccinated, and if not already, de-sexed. So from that point on, what we do is just get to know that dog. And we have to assess it, you know, in a home environment. It's very hard to accurately assess a dog in the pound or shelter. They're not being themselves. So in the home, you get to know them. You get to, you know, work out how are they with other dogs? How are they with cats? How are they with people? Today's a meet and greet and a house and yard check with a potential adopter. They have put in their adoption application and we've deemed them as very suitable. We'll go and meet them and see if their house is okay and if they like Roy and Fez, if things are all good, then we'll go ahead with an adoption on another day. Just gonna run around and bark and wee on everything. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people can be a bit put off by the forms they have to fill out and, you know, there's often a phone interview and a meet and greet, but it's not to try and scare anyone away, it's to try and make sure that they get a dog that's going to be perfect for them. It's quite good though, it's good, it's sort of conditioning us that the dogs are coming, it's not just, well, they undo the ribbon, there's the box, there's the dogs, there's a lot that we need to do as well, so it's sort of getting us prepared as a family, which is important. This is St Joseph's Abbey Field at Malvern and this is a, an independent living home for elderly people over the age of 55. I try to make it as homely as I can and, uh, and try to make it one big happy family and most of the time we all get on pretty well. What about you Gerald? Yes. You like dogs? I had three in my lifetime. Okay. They're wonderful. I wanted a dog because I am now settled here and intend to stay for a few years and I felt that the house needed something too, uh, to glue us together a little bit. I suppose it'd be good to have something uh, other than ourselves to worry about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> After asking the residents and realising how keen they were, made it my uh, mission to look around and get the right type of dog. I thought just a small dog, a little um, Maltese Shih Tzu. I've been looking at dogs in the street and they just seem to be about the right size. I particularly wanted a dog who needed a, a home and wanted lots of love and I knew that it'd get plenty here. Now that Gilbert's been in foster care for a few weeks, it's time for Saskia to write up his profile and post him on Pet Rescue. Once uploaded, it hasn't taken long for Gilbert to attract some interest. He's on his way to his first meet and greet with a prospective family. But the city streets seem to be making this country boy a bit nervy. Um, basically, we come to meet a rescue dog that we're hoping to adopt. Since having the baby, Abby's not getting the attention she needs, so we need a play friend for Abby. I just hope that they get along and they're, they're perfect friends and we can include Gilbert into our family. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Let you do it in your yeah. own time. Yeah, see, I'll say hello to Abby. Abby's a lovely girl. I've had a look on a website and I found a dog, the sort of dog I'm looking for, his name was Toby. But when I um, inquired about him, he'd already been um, rescued. So the girl that I've been communicating with sent me a, a photo of another little dog called Tasha. And she is very sweet. Tasha was given to her um, by a friend who'd had her surrendered um, because Tasha had previously been owned by a lady that was very, very sick. And basically, she had to be surrendered because the lady didn't have much of a chance of survival. Tasha needs someone that's around her most of the time. She likes to follow people around just in case she's needed. 
It's not a big effort, but some people really can't provide that for their dog. Tasha is the most lovely little girl. She has the sweetest little personality. All she is is a big ball of love. Lovely family. Their house is absolutely fine. They understand about pugs. You know, when Fez and Roy jumped on the couch, they didn't care, which is brilliant. Their old pug used to do that. I want the family to have a think about it, make sure that they're not just diving into something. It's a lifelong commitment. These pugs have already come through rescue once. We don't want them having to come back through rescue. And I will go home and have a think about things as well. Saved from the pound, Gilbert settles into life with his foster carer. Along with Roy and Fez, he's doing his first meet and greet with a prospective family, whilst the residents of St Joseph's Abbeyfield are keen to meet Tasha, a Maltese Shih Tzu which lost its owner through illness. Well, Gilbert's very nervous today because there's a lot of noise at the park. There's a footy match on next door. So I think we shall see if he's a bit more relaxed on his sort of home turf in my garden. That's good, he's starting to follow her around a bit. Oh, Nandy. So, hey, you be nice. It's good to get them off the leads so they don't feel tethered. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Well, we've been searching on the internet, looking for another dog. We've got two sort of younger dogs and we thought, OK, senior dog, we could have room for them. They're older, they're quieter. And then we thought a lot of the time the senior dogs are not sought after, um, discarded maybe. We think we've uh, found a dog that we like. He's nine years old. Nine years old, male. Male. And he's got grey hair. He does have grey hair. <laughs> Yeah, Ernie's story is quite a sad one. His um, elderly owner decided to move to Queensland, probably retire, and didn't want to take Ernie with him. Um, he left Ernie with his daughter, apparently, and Ernie escaped and was rounded up by the ranger and taken to the pound. And when she was phoned to say, Ernie's here, you want to collect him, she said no. And I went in there to um, get another dog out, a, a big yum dog, and row after row of big yapping, barking dogs, and there was this tiny little guy, you know, this elderly nine or 10-year-old Ernie, Mini Foxy, trying to compete with all of them, and I just thought, he has to go, he's got to get out of here. So back home he came with me. He's just a great little dog. He's all four paws on the ground. He's just easy going, no trouble at all. You'd hardly know he was here. <laughs> Hello, Saskia speaking. Oh, Ernie, the little um, little mini foxy. Yeah, look, he's about nine or ten years old. He's um, a really laid-back little guy. Well, we're expecting the dog today, and um, I'm just uh, packing away the food that the residents have bought for her in preparation for her arrival. Um, one of my residents who uh, doesn't usually get up until I ring her bell and say lunch is ready, was actually up at 10 o'clock that morning dressed and waiting for this dog. Hello, Natalie arrived with the dog. She was just adorable. She had her in her arms and this sweet little thing just came in and stole our hearts. We saw Annie and thought, oh my gosh, he looks awfully cute and looks like he needs a home. So we contacted Saskia, we got hold of her. Jamie wasn't home, but the first day I met him, he got along with my dogs fantastically well. He's full of personality, yeah. Right. He's not, not a doddery old guy. He's like most little dogs, they're larger than life. <laughs> uh, I thought she was small, cute. Cause first day here, she was frightened, you know. She didn't know anybody. But when she latched on that Lita was the food management, she was sort of settled in and then she decided she was going to sleep in with Lita and that was that. I always said I would never have a dog sleeping with me, but, you know, it's very difficult when they're so cute. As Tasha makes herself at home, it looks like Ernie's about to start a two-week trial period with Kim, Jamie and their two dogs. All right, mister, well, we'll have to pack up some of your little things. Yeah, we are that close to keeping him just because he's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> they're so little, but... <laughs> yeah. 
this is when I cry. <laughs> They've become part of your life and they feel like your baby. So the first night's always the hardest, but you've always got your other dogs to, you know, keep your chin up. And then you just remember why you're doing it in the first place. And that's because there's always another dog on death row that, you know, won't make it through um, without a foster carer. So. You just have to be strong for them and then look forward to the next one that comes into your home. Hopefully one day we won't have a use for foster carers. Everyone will be adopting, you know, from hounds, shelters and rescue groups. They'll be looking on pet rescue and, you know, we won't be killing as many dogs as we are in pounds and shelters right now. And then I can have a break. <laughs> Gilbert's meet and greet with a prospective family isn't quite going to plan, as he's showing very little interest in their dog, Abby. Meanwhile, Tasha and Ernie begin their two-week trial periods for what could be new beginnings for them both. Hi, Kirsten. It's Joanna from Pug Rescue. How are you? Good. I'm calling up to say your adoption application has been successful. Well, maybe they can take Roy and Fez to show and tell. Being um, uh, brought in, we rather thought she might not take to the place, but she's really taken to everyone. And uh, this is now her, ha her house. Although Tasha is fitted in beautifully at St Joseph's Abbey Field, there's one thing standing in the way of her becoming a permanent member of the family. The thing about this place is they're run by an independent committee. I need to get their permission to first of all have a dog for myself and secondly for it to have the run of the house. They told me that they had to check with insurance as to whether or not it was feasible to have a dog here in case somebody tripped over the dog or whatever. I can tell you the residents are really so keen to have it. I don't think they'd let me send her back. They just wouldn't. So whilst we wait for the committee's decision, let's check in to see how Gilbert's going at his own meet and greet. Well, they were a really lovely family and they had a lovely dog as well. But Gilbert just seemed really shy and not wanting to engage with Abby, which was a shame because she really wanted to play with him. But I think he was just a bit overwhelmed. It was his first meet and greet and he is still a pup. So the world's still a big place for him and he's still finding his paws. Today's Roy and Fez's big day. They're being adopted. I think they're excited. I'm excited for them. Oh, that's the door. Can I go in? Oh. 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 Hello. Hello. Hello, Joe. So it looks like Roy and Fez have finally found themselves a new and loving home. Come on into my bedroom. Whilst they work out where they're going to sleep for the night and Joe runs the family through some of their particulars, let's head across town and check in with Ernie and see how he's settled into his new life. Good I think the first first day we got him home, um, he did a good perimeter check, you know, made sure everything was sniffed out, um, and these guys just instantly hit it off. They snuggle together, they eat together, kind of like they've been together for eight years or something. I noticed Tasha's really sort of seems to be enjoying, you know, being yeah. in the house. Yeah. How does everyone feel before, you know, the committee makes the decision? Oh, yes, she's decided on the pecking order. Has she? Leader's the you're boss. The oh, leader's the boss. <laughs> you're this one the comes top. second and we're the pack. <laughs> oh, OK. After the trial, the committee decided that, yes, it would be a, a lovely idea to have a pet in the house. Oh, great. So congratulations to Tasha. Chris what bought way? a big cake to celebrate. Lovely. So it's good news for Tasha, and things are looking up for Gilbert as well. He's got another meet and greet, this time with the Donison family. But once again, the timid boy found the whole experience just a little bit too daunting. But his next home will be forever. So it's important to get it right for both the dog and the family. And through persistence, that's exactly what's happened for Gilbert, who's finally fallen on his paws. I fell in love with him straight away because of his um, fluffy ears and his um, cute tail. Looks so innocent. Yeah, the innocent look of yeah. him. Yeah. Sort of, you know, like that kind-hearted look. With a family of five, it was probably a little overwhelming <laughs> for him. 
but after a couple of days he made himself at home, snuggles in with whoever's there. He um, runs around and bumps his head on everything, like he's very clumsy. It's just amazing, I couldn't imagine him just being left in the pound all lonely with no one loving him. Oh, it comes up to you, it wants to be rubbed or cuddled or something. You can't very well rub and cuddle each other, you know. The um, mental health of some of these uh, residents has improved out of sight. Brightens the place up, gives you something else to think of. You know, when you hear a bark, you dive out. One or two people are now far more relaxed, uh, which dogs tend to do to, to most people. I think it's also nice to know that their lives could have been really different if we hadn't have met them. And I think I really like that. When they're curled up in bed, it's like, you've done well, you know, found a nice place to stay. I think what really cemented my feeling about helping rescue pets and becoming a foster carer was just hearing about how many dogs and cats don't make it out of shelters and pounds alive. It's just an insanely unacceptable amount of pets in Australia. and. Even though I can only foster a few drops in the ocean, it's still lives saved and it's, it's lives that matter to them.